Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Today, we're talking about when I got called up and my car was stolen. Uh, literally, was shipping my car to where I got called up to, and uh, they took it, and they took everything inside of it. And I'm going to give you kind of details and uh, why I decided to never bring my car with me ever again. Okay. So a lot of people have been asking me about, you know, Matt, what happens when you get called up and you have to go to the next level in the minor leagues, or you have to go to the major leagues? Like... What do you do? How do you move and all that stuff, okay? So this happened to me a decent amount of times during my career. Um, and every time it happened, luckily, I was someplace where when I was told I could just pack up my stuff and uh, move on to the next level, okay? And so I moved from short season to low A ball, and then the next year I was at high A, and I got sent up halfway through to double A, um, and I went from triple A to the big leagues one year. And, and literally every time I was called up, I had enough time where I could pack up get my stuff ready, and head on out. So that was not very difficult. But the hard part was figuring out how to get your car to the next place, okay? So the first time I, I got called up and had my car with me, um, I was in Lake Elsinore, California, and I had to get my car to A. And you can't just jump in it and drive because they need you there for the next game, right? You get the call, um, or you get called into the manager's office, and they say, hey, you're getting called up, you're going to the next level. They say, pack up your stuff, and uh, we're going to fly you out at whatever time. They just give you the time, and you got to be on the flight. So when I was in Lake Elsinore, I had my car with me. And I talked about this in a previous video. If you, if this is your first time watching me and you have no idea, um, I've talked a lot about how the, the stupidest thing I ever did when I got drafted was I bought a really expensive car. bought a car for you know, almost $100,000. What was I thinking? The stupidest thing I ever did. And uh, so it was a Jaguar XK. First of all, the thing broke down, uh, like, for a, almost a $100,000 car, I thought that it was going to, you know, this is when I knew nothing about anything. Um, I thought, like, oh, man, well, the car will last me a lifetime, and I'm sure it'll keep a lot of its value because it's expensive, right? It's an expensive car. No, no, no. That thing dropped in value faster than any car I've ever seen. And uh, it was in the shop, like, every six months, and it had tons of electrical problems, and there was a lot of times where I would you know, be someplace and it just wouldn't start and then like nothing would happen. You press the button and it's just completely dead. That happened to me all the time. Plus it was rear wheel drive. It had these big like racing tires on the thing. I live in Massachusetts where it snows a little bit. And so like it'd be a dusting. There'd be this much snow and I'd be in the middle of the highway. And people are just passing me and I'm like, they're like, what the idiot driving a stupid car in Massachusetts. So it was not a very good decision I made. But anyways, I have this thing. Okay, and I'm in Lake Elsinore, California, and I get called up. So it's got to go. So I set up a, a move with this shipping company. They come and get your car, and they put it on the truck. They're supposed to take really nice care of it, right? We put it in a nice inside thing because it's an expensive car. We're going to treat it with, you know, very nice, and we'll have gloves on anytime we touch it, and we're going to drive it to San Antonio. That's where I was going. I was getting called up to AA San Antonio. All right, so I fly, and these guys, you know, they put my car on, and I say I wave by, and there we go, they're they're going. So I get in San Antonio, and they tell me that it's gonna take. I think they said it was gonna take like four to seven days to get it over there. Beautiful, okay. So I fly over there, and I'm playing, and uh, and about a week passes, and uh, no car. So I call them up. And I'm like, hey, uh, I just want to get an update. Any idea when my car's coming out here? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's just taking a little longer than expected. But we'll be out there. Yeah, we had a couple of small things. Uh, but it'll be out there soon. I'm like, okay, great. So I wait and I wait and I wait. And then like almost, you know, I'm playing and stuff. I'd like a car. And then like another week passes and I call them up. And I'm like, hey, uh, you know, uh, you guys said it was going to be a little bit longer. But I'm, I'm still waiting and there's no car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let us check on. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll get back to you. We just got to figure out what's going on here. So I'm like, oh, no, no big deal. It's just the most expensive thing I ever bought in my life. It's the stupidest decision of my life. But I did it, and, uh, and now nobody knows where my car is. So I'm like, okay. So I'm waiting. Now I'm calling them like every day and like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. We had to stop overnight at this city and that city. So it probably takes about, I don't know, it felt probably like three weeks. And one day I show up. Right, I come home from the stadium, and it, they just left it. They left it at my apartment. They asked me where my apartment was. They just left it in a parking spot. And so, um, so I get out and I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like making sure that there's no dents or anything on it. And there's, there's no dents. So I, I run around. 
I run around and I, I start it up, make sure it sounds all right. And I look at the odometer, I think that's what it's called, and there's like just under a thousand miles put on the thing from when I, so I wrote down when I, when they picked it up, I wrote down how many miles. Stupid of me. I should have taken a picture, but I didn't take a picture. I just wrote it down. Okay. Um, cause I just wanted to make sure that like, you know, I don't know, they weren't going to just drive it around like Ferris Bueller's day off. Uh, I want you to take extra special care of this vehicle. Okay. Hey, no problem. Relax. Oh, uh, you fellas have nothing to worry about. I'm a professional. wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to happen. Um, well, there was like a thousand extra miles on it, just under a thousand extra miles. So I was like, what the hell? I could have drove it from freaking Lake Elsinore over here. And I also had to pay extra. I had to pay a lot of money to get it shipped nicely. Okay. So they put about a thousand miles on it. That well, They claim they did it. I'm going to get into that, but I know they did. Okay. So then I'm like, I'm now I'm pissed. So now I go and I open up my trunk. Okay. Now when I left from Lake Elsinore, to fly, I only brought like a small suitcase because I was just going quick, okay? I packed everything I had into that. So I had like my big suitcase and I had like my suits and I had uh, my Xbox, which back then I played a lot of video games, pretty much like every day. I had like 50 games, I had my DVDs, I had everything in there. And I open up my trunk and uh, there's nothing in there except for my suitcase. And it looks like basically like just the clothes that they thought I didn't have very good style back then. I had horrible style. The clothes that they didn't like were in there, but everything else was gone. My Xbox, all my games, my DVDs, uh, I think my suit was gone. Everything, everything that was worth any money was gone. And I was like, oh my God. So, uh, I called the company and, uh, and I called the police and they said, uh, so I explained everything to them. And they said, uh, we have no idea how that happened. And I said, what do you mean you had no idea what happened? You had the car the whole time. Like, it was your responsibility to watch it. How, how did this happen? Well, someone must have broke into it, you know, while overnight one night when it was, you know, when it was just sitting there. You know, we can't drive it the whole time. So overnight, somebody must have broken into the trunk and taken everything. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, I guess that could happen. Um, but who drove the thousand miles on it? And they said, wasn't us. And I said, well, then who was it? And they said, I don't, whoever stole it, maybe, maybe they, maybe they drove it a thousand miles. I said, you're right. They took it, right? They, they snuck in one night and, uh, and they, they, they opened the trunk and they took out the stuff that they liked. And then they said, you know what? Let's drive it too. And so they started that baby up whatever truck it was on, and they drove it off, they got it off the truck, and they drove it a thousand miles. And then after a thousand miles, they said, you know what, let's put it back on the truck, okay? We're, we just want to drive it a thousand miles, okay? And we're just gonna go around town like 4,000 times. And, uh, and then we're gonna put it back on the truck, and, uh, and uh, we're gonna keep the stuff we took out, but we're gonna leave the truck there, and then we're gonna take off, and nobody's gonna know this because you know you can drive a thousand miles in like what a couple minutes, right? Yeah, it doesn't take very long to drive a thousand miles and get it back on the truck without anyone noticing. And and then uh, and then that company's gonna bring the car over to me. I said, does that sound like a logical thing? It wasn't us. That's all they kept saying. It wasn't us. We didn't do it. And I said, I wrote down right here how many miles. I wrote down anything. You take a picture. No, I didn't take a picture. I just wrote it down. Well, it wasn't us. So anyways, I went to the police and uh, apparently there was nothing that they could do about this. And, uh, and so I basically just had a file, like, I don't know, an insurance claim basically that um, of all the stuff that I had stolen and I got like, you know, a little bit of money back for it. But like, I had to write down like every video game I had. I had like every video game. Um, like I said, I used to play baseball and play video games. And uh, I remember I was getting so mad because I'd buy a game for like 60 bucks. And the insurance company give me like three dollars for it or seven dollars for it because they were used video games, and so I didn't get very much back. Um, the thousand miles on my car really pissed me off, 
And then the car started having all these issues, which, you know, it already was kind of having issues. But ever since then, I would always be like, see those damn guys, they drove at 150 miles an hour. Um, and, and just so you guys know, like, it was, it was an expensive car, but it was, you know, the XK, it was a, a big, strong engine that could go really fast. So, like, if you want to take a car out, I, I don't think they were driving it. Like, I was, I drove it like a grandmother. I drove it like 55. I didn't want anything to happen to it. That's another reason, stupid reason I got it. I should have got a Toyota Prius if I'm going to drive it 55 on the highway. But I, I treated it very nicely. And I could just see these guys driving at 180 miles an hour, slamming on the gas pedal, screwing the whole thing up. Um, the only time I ever drove it fast, I didn't even drive it fast. I sat in the passenger seat. We're in Lake Elsinore right before I left and got and the thing got stolen. Uh, Kyle Blanks, I don't know if you guys remember Kyle Blanks, played with me with the Padres, played with Oakland, played with a couple teams, played with the Rangers, I think, played in the big leagues for a while. Big, strong dude, could hit the ball a mile. Um, I sat in the passenger seat with him, and he drove that thing down the in Lake Elsinore. We had this huge parking lot, and... Um, and he would drive this thing like a hundred and something miles an hour down the parking lot as fast as we could go. And I just sat in the passenger seat scared out of my mind. Um, but for some reason, I couldn't do that. I was always afraid to drive it too fast. But anyways, so every every time that something bad happened in that car, I blame those idiots that, that moved it. And, um, you know, I think we like went on to on like, what is it, a better business bureau or something. I don't know. We put some bad reviews. Back then, there was not a lot of things you could do, I guess. Um and I, I don't know. Anyways, I'm still upset about this whole thing. Um, but that's what happened to my car. And that's what happened to all my stuff. And usually things go much smoother than that when you're moving from team to team. But that was the last time I decided to ever bring my car again. I didn't want to bring my car ever again. I was afraid that was going to happen. So I left it home. And I would just uh, I would just walk everywhere pretty much. Or I'd have to call a buddy and be like, hey, can you drive me over here? Drive me over there. Which I hated as well. But it was better than having my car stolen and driven thousand miles so um if you were part of that let me know what happened i'm not mad now it's a long time ago um but i would like to find out whatever happened to my car and if you have my video games and xbox i hope you're still enjoying it so that's all i got today thanks so much for watching it i appreciate it subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up share the video with all your friends all that good stuff and we'll talk to you later